Uh, my name is uh, Ben Asi. Um, I'm here to present Lamphone, which is uh, optical passive sound recovery from uh, a desktop light bulb. Uh, this paper was also co-ordered by Yaron Pirotin, Professor Adi Shamir, Professor Yuval Alovich, and Dr. Boris Zadov. So the research question that we tried to uh, resolve or to answer in this uh, research was, um, can a desktop bulb be used as a microphone? So the answer is that by using scientific tools to analyze the vibrations of a light bulb, attackers can effectively recover high quality speech and non-speech audio. But let's start with a warning. Um, turning a light bulb into a microphone is somehow a very, very challenging task. Now, probably some of you are wondering why, and the fact is, or the primary reason is because light bulbs were not exactly designed to be used as microphones. So throughout uh, the next 12 minutes, I will try to convince you that you can force them and recover a perceptible speech from them. Okay, so let's briefly review the related work in this area. Um, in recent years, various uh, non-acoustic methods to eavesdrop sound were introduced by uh, our community. Um, these methods mostly can be divided into two uh, main categories, two primary categories. Uh, the first category is the internal methods, which are methods that obtain data um, by using a device, mostly compromised device, which is co-located in proximity to the target. And under this uh, topic, uh, it was demonstrated how, for example, uh, data obtained from motion sensors or even magnetic data that was obtained from uh, uh, a hard disk can be used to recover speech. Uh, the second category is the external methods, um, which are methods that rely on data obtained by a sensor or device that is not collocated with, the, uh, with the, the victim or with the, uh, uh, the target. And there are two primary methods under this topic. The first one is the laser microphone, which utilizes a laser transceiver in order to recover speech. And the second one is the visual microphone, which um, obtains data from high frequency video camera and, and analyzes the vibrations of objects to recover uh, speech. For example, it was demonstrated by the guys from MIT that they can recover speech from a bag of chips. They recover uh, speech from a bag of chips. Um, however, each of these methods is uh, limited in one of the following characteristics. Uh, some methods require the attacker to compromise the device with the malware. Uh, other methods are active, which means that they give indication uh, regarding their use. Uh, some methods cannot be applied in real time due to the fact that they require very or heavy computational resources. And other methods are limited at recovering speech at scream levels, so when I say scream levels, it's about 85 dBs and more. Now let's review Lemphon's threat model. Um, in Lemphon's threat model, we assume that the sound from the victim's room creates fluctuations on the surface of uh, the desktop uh, light bulb, which basically turns into a diaphragm. Now the eavesdropper directs a photodiode uh, at the light bulb via a telescope, and by doing so, it actually uh, turns the, the photodiode into a transducer. Uh, the optical signal is then sampled by the photo, uh, uh, from the photodiode is sampled via an A2D and processed using an algorithm which I'll review later on. Now, bear in mind that from an eavesdropper perspective, um, Lemphone is really uh, risky because uh, it is external, which means that it doesn't uh, rely on compromised device. It doesn't require the attacker to compromise the device in order to obtain the data. It is passive, so it means that it doesn't give any indication re regarding its use. It can be applied in real time, and moreover, it uh, can recover speech in normal volume levels. Normal volume levels are about 75 dBs, which is equivalent to the level of uh, uh, a virtual meeting. Okay, so let's review some of the physical analysis which is associated with the lymphone. And in a nutshell, sound waves which produced by speech hit the light bulb's uh, surface. Uh, the light bulb vibrates according to the sound waves, which are the vibrations basically modulate the speech or the nearby sound and turns into a diaphragm. Uh, the light bulb's vibrations create very 
very small changes in the distance between uh, the light bulb and the static photodiode. Uh, when I say very small, there are maximum 55 microns according to measurements that we took from uh, a gyroscope. And the small changes in the distance between the surface of the bulb uh, causes the photodiode to output different voltage levels, which basically serve as optical measurements, which are then sampled by the A2D. And the optical measurements modulate the sound near the light bulb with some additional side effects. Now, the exact analysis uh, in the paper shows basically how attackers or eavesdroppers can determine the sensitivity of the equipment they need in order to recover speech from a light bulb based on the distance they uh, want to recover from. Now let's review the optical acoustical transformation algorithm and we basically isolate the audio from the uh, optical measurements in a few steps. The first one is we take the raw data, the uh, optical measurements. Uh, we then apply some bandstop filtering and some high-pass filtering. The high-pass filtering is in order to uh, filter the uh, low uh, noise in uh, low frequencies. The, best, the bandstop filtering is used in order to um, filter harmonics of the, uh, the LED, which are captured in 100 hertz and 200 hertz, etc. We then scale the distance. You can see how scaling basically improves the signal-to-noise ratio. And we also apply some, uh, some uh, spectral subtraction, which is a dynamic method to um, um, denoise uh, signals, uh, which doesn't assume anything regarding the distribution of the noise. And finally, we use some equalizer in cases where uh, the signal is not good enough or whether the response is not equal across the spectrum. Okay, so let's review the evaluation. Um, first of all, we try to compare the performance of the LEM phone to visual microphone. Uh, as I mentioned before, visual microphone was uh, demonstrated by a group from MIT about eight years ago. They recovered speech from a bag of chips using a very, uh, uh, using high frequency uh, video camera. Um, we actually replicated the same experimental setup used by uh, the guys from uh, um, Visual Microphone. Uh, we used an illuminated uh, table lamp, uh, which we placed on, uh, on the in the office. We used the exact same six sentences from Timit Repository um, for this experiment. Um, in this case, we used the same speech level, which was 95 dB. This is very, very, um, I would say, loud volume. Uh, the optical measurements in this case were obtained from three meters away, again, as in the case of visual microphone, and we placed the speakers at the same distance from uh, the, the bag of chips that they uh, placed. In our case, it's from the uh, uh, light bulb, which was five centimeters away. So I want to convince you that you can uh, uh, hear or recover very good sound. I will uh, play the original uh, speech and then the recovered speech. So first of all, this is the original speech. She had your dark suit and greasy wash water all year. Okay, this is the original speech and this is the recovered speech. She had your dark suit and greasy wash water all year. Okay, let me play you another uh, sentence. This is the original speech. Don't ask me to carry an oily rag like that. And this is the recovered. Don't ask me to carry an oily rag like that. Okay, bear in mind, it's, this was uh, recovered from light. Okay, so we analyzed the performance of the LEM phone and we got to the understanding that the quality of the recovered speech uh, by LEM phone and the visual microphone is about the same level. Now, um, the first experiment was done in order to compare the performance of LEM phone to a uh, state-of-the-art method. Um, we tried to do additional experiment in order to uh, somehow try to apply LEM phone in more realistic scenario. And in order to do so, uh, we try to test the ability to recover audio from various distances under the, I would say, the experimental setup of a virtual meeting. Uh, we again uh, used an illuminated table lamp, uh, which we placed in the office. The speakers in this case were set to 75 dB. 75 dB is the equivalent, uh, I would say, uh, sound level for um, a virtual meeting. We played the famous st statement uh, by Donald Trump. 
Um, the measurements in this case were obtained from 5 meters to 35 meters, and the speakers in this case were placed 25 centimeters away from the light bulb. Now, 25 centimeters away are basically half of the depth of the table of the desktop that you can see in this case. This is the table that was used. This is the light bulb. This is the speakers where we used to uh, play the, the uh, Trump statement that you were about to hear. And this is the telescope that was used. You can see the photo diode mounted to the telescope, uh, the place where you basically uh, observe the, uh, from the telescope. OK, with that in mind, um, I want to play to you the, uh, the original uh, sentence, and then you will see the recoveries from 5, 15 meters, 35 meters, all of which were done where the distance between the speakers and the lamp was 25 centimeters. We will make America great again. This is the original. This is from... This is 25 meters away. Okay, this is 35 meters away. Now, as you can see, the signal or the quality of the signal deteriorates with distance. Uh, you can compensate uh, for the, the deterioration of the quality with the dedicated lens. Uh, this is the best that we were able to, uh, to recover. We will... Okay, now as you can see, uh, perceptible speech can be recovered from a distance of uh, 35 meters at experimental setup of a virtual meeting, which again, equivalent to 75 decibels, when the victim sits in front of a desktop in a distance of 25 centimeters from the light bulb, again, which is equivalent to half of the depth of a standard uh, desktop. Now let's review the takeaways from this talk. So first of all, the first takeaway is perspective, okay? Uh, in 2022, you should be more worried about smartphones and laptops because they pose much greater risk to individuals' privacy than uh, the light bulb. Um, in this context, Lemphone is a calculated risk, uh, a risk that should be uh, taken into account only after you mitigated greater eavesdropping risks posed by internet-connected devices with integrated uh, microphone. And this, your smartwatches, smartphones, and laptops are probably pose a greater risk to your uh, privacy. Now, the second takeaway is that probably Lemphone was utilized in the wild 30 years ago. Now, probably some of you answer, this is again my opinion, um, some of you probably wonder what is the reason for this uh, very extreme argument. And in order to answer it, let's review uh, a lesson learned from uh, the Great Seal Bug, which is also known as the Thing. Um, the Great Seal Bug, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is an eavesdropping device which was uh, concealed inside a picture that was given as a gift by the Soviets to the, Amer to the American ambassador to the Soviet Union. Okay? Uh, it took the Americans about six years to detect its real use, and it wasn't uh, detected or revealed by uh, the Americans, it was revealed by the British Embassy. Now, the reason that I mention uh, this specific case is because uh, the Great Seal Bug is considered the predecessor of the RFID. It was utilized or used by um, the Soviets around the end of uh, World War II at, 40, at uh, 1945 and patented in America about three decades after. Okay, so basically what you can understand is that there's a gap of three decades between what is revealed by, uh, to, by, uh, to the public and what is really used by uh, the clandestine agencies that intend to use the, to recover speech. Now, with that in mind, I want to thank you for attending this talk. If you like this uh, specific talk on uh, um, speech eavesdropping from light, you should also uh, look for the other two papers that we've published, which is the GLOAM attack that was published last year at CCS, and the Little Seal Bug that was uh, presented this year at Blackett uh, 22. Thank you very much. <laughs>